Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to be talking about piled foundations. I'm going to be explaining how civil engineers and geotechnical engineers design piled foundations. I'm going to go through this in three different steps. So firstly I'm going to start with an introduction explaining why, what actually are piled foundations and why are they needed. I'm then going to show you some free to use uh, web software which can help you with pile foundation design. It can estimate the uh, length of pile foundations. This can help you in either your job, your uh, in terms of your designs, or if you're a student, it can also help you with some of your coursework or your assignments. And finally, I'm going to then go into a lot of detail in terms of the first principles and help you understand uh, the theory behind how piles are designed. So without further ado, let's look at what piles really are. So if you take a cross section across any major city, you'll basically see something a bit like this image here. You'll see big tall buildings, often um, in modern cities, and you'll see lots of these thin uh, looking uh, straw-like objects, which are sticking from the building's concrete foundation deep into the ground. And so these are piled foundations, and they're required under many of the structures that we build, especially heavy structures, which would be too heavy to sit on the regular soil. Quite often, if, if cities have some, um, you know, if they're not built fully on rock, which is quite rare, you could have some soft layers on top of, like, the underlying bedrock. And so quite often what you'll do with these piled foundations is either you'll spread that load in across um, a wider sort of area of the um, soft soil so you'll sort of um, extend deeper into that and capture more of the sort of available strength of that soft soil or in some cases you'll um, go down all the way into the bedrock and you'll connect that tall building's uh, forces and its, and its weight all the way down into the bedrock layer. So the way we design these is really important because if we get it wrong, it can cause big issues for buildings in terms of settlement and even uh, their overall strength and stability. So it's really important we get these calculations right. So what I'm going to show you now is some software which can help us with estimating these pile lengths. So if you go over to www.calcforge.com, I'll also put the link in the bio to this video and go over to the free pile calculator. So once you've opened this up, you'll see a, dash, uh, a dashboard or a UI, which looks a little bit like this. And from this um, tab, you'll see here on the left that you have a preview of a pile, a pile foundation. So this is one of the uh, piles here sticking down into the weathered rock. So it goes through the made ground and into the weathered rock. And what you'll see here is a permanent load. So this is a, a permanent load is a load that's acting over a long time. So this could be the weight of the building itself. Um, whereas a variable load is something which could fluctuate or change. So this could be like vehicles uh, accessing the site, it could be pedestrian loads. Um, but the idea here is variable loads could be changing. Uh, and what you see here is we have a hundred kilonewton permanent load acting on this and zero kilonewtons variable. And this software is basically estimating the length of the pile, how much length is needed in order to kind of absorb or transfer this force into the soil. So this only considers a single pile. Um, and there's basically different types of piles we can consider. So here on the right, you'll see pile type. We have steel driven pile selected right now, but we could also use an RC board pile. So driven piles is where you use a a sort of big hammer, a pile driver, which pushes the steel into the ground, just hammers it in. One of the challenges with this can be sometimes if you have a boulder or a rock or something, some obstacle, um, if it hits into that, sometimes you won't be able to get this pile into the depth it needs to go. Um, but RC board piles is where you basically have a circular reinforced concrete pile and this is kind of drilled in, so you'll, you, you'll quite often just drill in and sort of like remove that soil and then pour in concrete or, or um, you know, fill that in with reinforced concrete in some way. So let's just select steel driven pile for now and you'll see here section. So what we can do here is um, we can actually change different steel sections, standard steel sections. So you can have 
uh, H piles, you can have circular steel piles that are hammered in, all these different sections, and you'll see here the different section sizes that are available, the different standard sections. So we'll just stick with this 175 section for now, but there's a big database here of all different pile types that can be used. We can then adjust the permanent load, so I can maybe say that this should be 120 instead, and we can hit analyze again. And what we'll basically see here is this length, the pile length has actually increased. So in order to resist this increased permanent load, we've needed to increase our minimum pile length here. I can also add a variable load if I want to. And if I click advanced settings, I've also got some options here to basically consider a building load instead of this um, permanent load uh, acting on. So this is a way to sort of predict a loading based on uh, a building. So number of floors, spacing of the piles, and take an estimate based on Euro codes. I can then also hit edit geology. So if I click this button, you'll see here that I can actually change the geology, the different properties here. So what I could do is I could actually click add new layer, and you'll see here that I've created this custom layer now. Um, I could change this weathered rock to say another two meters, um, and then let's let's make this thirty. And what you'll see here is different options for the conditions. So drained conditions or undrained conditions. Drained conditions are typically found where the poor water pressure has has left the soil. So this could be the case if it's like a sand. Um, quite often when it's loaded, the water will immediately sort of drain out so it becomes drained. Whereas undrained conditions could be more something related to clay, which can take a very long time for the water to gradually um, dissipate. And in this case, we use different calculations. So in undrained, we consider shear strength. For drained, we're considering angle of friction. So this is a difference between angle of friction is basically some sort of skin friction or frictional force, whereas undrained uses something called adhesion, which is like stickiness, like how sticky is the soil onto the pile. We'll explain this a little bit more in the um, sort of in-depth uh, se sec section of this uh, lesson at the end of this. So basically we can customize the geology in here. And if I close this and hit analyze again, what I'll see is the soil once again sort of updates this profile and now I have my made ground, my weathered rock and then this custom layer here and you'll see that it's sort of running into an error now so what I could do is I can actually edit the geology and perhaps change some of these properties in order to get this to sort of run more accurately. I think the problem is probably because this friction angle is too low and it's causing um, the pile length to be greater than the 30 30 meters available. So if I'll just change that and hit reanalyze, you'll see now I've like recalculated this pile length. So that's something to bear in mind that basically if you reduce this friction angle, I'm also going to need like a deeper pile because there's like less friction force acting on the pile itself. So you need to be careful with this in order to make sure that you have the necessary um, sort of properties of the soil. I can then also like break this down into I can also break this down into different um, groups so I can actually look in this in this result summary it will tell me some other information about the minimum pile length with load testing and without load testing so this is following euro codes so euro code 7 um, recommendations I can see pile details here so we've worked with some suppliers to basically gather up some of the uh, product information, so some of their sections they have available. And if I click full calculation, I'll basically see here how this um, calculation has been put together for each layer of the soil. So what's the skin friction that's available for each one of these layers, um, what's being offered there in terms of the base resistance, um, and then this calculation breaks down exactly what the total resistance is, total skin friction, and then therefore calculates the minimum pile length required. Um, for both design approaches. So design approach one, design approach two, I think in this case design approach two is the more conservative one probably. So I can also finally generate a PDF calculation from these results. So I can click full PDF report and this will process and download a full PDF report for this uh, calculation I've produced. So that's everything in terms of this free software. And now what I'm gonna do is I'll move on to show you 
the theory behind this uh, calculation. Pile foundations transfer load in two ways. End-bearing piles terminate in a hard, strong layer of soil. The pile cannot settle to activate any friction without the surrounding soil and therefore the entire load is transferred into the base. Skin friction piles allow the pile to settle, meaning that friction transfers via low friction into the surrounding soil. There are two major types of piled foundations, driven piles and board piles. Let's look at board piles first. First of all, board piles installation uses a drilling rig to drill a steel casing into the earth. After this, the earth is excavated from within the steel casing. Extra steel casings are attached onto the existing steel casings already drilled into the earth, and the entire assembly is drilled to a greater depth. For deep board foundations, the board pile excavator must be able to reach the termination depth. The termination depth is the pile design length. Calcforge can be used to estimate this length. After the termination depth is reached, the reinforcement ne needs to be added as per the pile design and is lowered into the steel casing. Concrete is then poured using a tremie to the base of the piled foundation. After the concrete is fully poured and before it has reached its full strength, the steel casing is removed. This process is repeated for all the pile foundations required in the group. Driven piled foundations, however, are installed differently to board pile foundations. Driven pile foundations are installed using a pile driving rig. This rig either vibrates or hammers the piles into the ground. This means that driven piles can only be installed into soft ground. Typically driven piles are made out of steel. Their geometry is commonly H-section. The profile of this H-section means that piles mainly act in friction and provide little end resistance. Let's see how pile capacity is calculated, starting with piles under in ground, for example clays. Pile capacity can be estimated using the skin friction acting along the pile length and the bearing of the base of the pile. A short pile of 3 meters can be used to support a foundation and rock that is 2 meters below the surface. In this case, the capacity is predominantly uh, end bearing. Pile, the pile cap is essentially a reinforced concrete deep beam, which transfers column load into piles. So now we'll use a simple formula to determine the ultimate pile capacity in undrained soils. A and B, the area of the base, AP, is the surface area of the shaft. SUA is the shear strength of the soil around the shaft. This can vary and can be summed in discrete lengths based on site investigation data. SUV is undrained shear strength of soil at the base of the shaft. NC is bearing coefficient, commonly uh, alpha, is the adhesion factor, commonly 0.45. In the absence of data, let's now look at how we can calculate the bearing capacity in granular drained soil, such as sand. Bearing capacity is once again the sum of the skin friction acting on the pile length and the end varying pressure. QS is skin friction per meter squared of the surface area. This is calculated using the friction coefficient K, the drained vertical stress and the friction angle. The end bearing pressure is calculated using the uh, Tazagi method. A link to this video uh, on this method is included in the description in the video.